They woke up the next morning and obviously everything had changed. They decided they weren't gonna release the series. What's up guys, my name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and today we're doing 14 things you didn't know about Santa Cruz skateboards. We're gonna talk about how they started, some of their most iconic logos, some of their inventions that changed skateboarding, the team, collabs, and so much more. If you guys love these videos, we love making them. The best way to support us is to like, subscribe, and comment, and also head over to Instagram and follow us at Shred Shop and at Levi Switzer. The first Santa Cruz products ever made were in 1973. So if you're not good at math, that makes it this year, the 50th anniversary of Santa Cruz skateboards, which makes it the oldest continuously run skateboard company on earth. Three friends that are all surf rats in Santa Cruz, California, decide to join forces and start building surfboards. Their names are Richard Novak, Jay Sherman, and Doug Haupt. They incorporate the brand and they name it as an acronym for their names, NHS. Their surfboard business was actually way harder than they anticipated, so they decided to make some skateboard decks with some of the wood that they had laying around. Haupt would later sell his shares in the company to go over and focus his time on surfboard manufacturing, and that's where Haupt Surfboards came about. He was also inducted into the Surfing Hall of Fame. The first ever Santa Cruz skateboard ad ended up in Skateboarder Magazine, Volume 2, Issue 3. The first team riders were actually surfers who chose to ride skateboards when they weren't surfing. The skateboard industry was new at this time, and the urethane wheel was brand new. In 1974, Santa Cruz introduces the Road Rider wheels, which is the first wheel with a cage bearing or a precision bearing. It was such a groundbreaking technology at the time that it actually allowed skateboarding as a whole to leap forward in what you could do, what you could ride, what you could skate. Keep in mind that just a few years earlier, people were riding clay wheels with literally loose ball bearings in it. And because of that, a lot of tricks were held back because of the equipment. The Road Rider wheel was a huge success and advancement for the company, which in turn allowed a lot of cash injection back into the brand so they could keep building it. In fact, just one year later in 1975, they had sold over a million sets of Road Rider wheels. When it comes to skateboard logos, there is none more iconic than the Santa Cruz logo. In the early days of skateboarding, brands didn't actually even have logos. They just had their name written on the bottom of a board. And Santa Cruz started with a typeface, which eventually would get an overhaul thanks to Jim Phillips. He took that typeface and he made the iconic red dot logo. He designed this with Jay Sherman and he would also go on to design the famous Screaming Hand logo. It was a big step forward as far as skateboard graphics at the time because it featured bright colors and bold lines. And so it's safe to say that Santa Cruz would not be the brand that it is today without the iconic artwork of Jim Phillips. Some of the famous graphics that he's done over the years include the Santa Cruz logo, the Road Rider logo, the Indy logo, Steve Olson checkerboard, the Rob Roscop series, Grosso Toy Box, Jason Jesse Poseidon, the Salva Tiger, some of the Nautis SMA Panthers, as well as boards for Jim T and Christian Asoy. He was also inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame in 2017. Sadly, in 1979, Jay Sherman passed away, so he didn't get to see the brand and the movement that Santa Cruz is today. The other thing that made Santa Cruz stick out amongst the rest is the team that they created. In the 1970s, they had Jay Hudson, who was the number one slalom rider in the world at the time, and he was representing the brand. As skateboarding transitioned into pool riding, they created an all-star cast of team riders. People like Steve Olson, Dwayne Peters, Salba and Malba, Rob Roscoff, Jason Jesse, Christian Asoy, and Jeff Grosso. In the 1980s, Santa Cruz Skateboards was one of the first brands to introduce concaves to board shape. They introduced a board series of varying degrees of concave, everything from two degrees to six degree bevel. Also, as graphics got more and more intricate, they invented a bent screen so the graphic went on smooth and looked cleaner on the curves. David Frail is one of the masterminds in the printing department at Santa Cruz. He tells the story of making the Jeff Kendall graffiti graphic. He said as the screens were changing ever so slightly in the factory, the factory workers would go and they'd add in their own little tag into the graphics. The original graphic had Kendall's girlfriend's name at the time, Jenny. And when they re-released it recently, David helped him change Jenny's name to his now wife's name, Maureen. It's also interesting to note that in the art department at Santa Cruz, Jimbo Phillips, son of Jim, has continued to do art for them for many years. He keeps his father's style of the poppy, thick line artwork. He's done many different artwork over the years, including a San Jose Sharks jersey. He's obviously done boards for Santa Cruz, 
Cruise, but also Creature, Consolidated, and many more. You can even check out a bunch of band posters that he's done. Although Santa Cruz Skateboards is one of the biggest skateboard companies on earth, it still has family vibes to it. It's still skater owned and operated. The CEO and president of NHS, Bob DeNike, was an old pro for Santa Cruz Skateboards back in the 1970s. They also have other retired pros working for them like Jeff Kendall and Andrew Cannon. Another interesting story that David tells in the coffee book, Disposable, is that in 2001, Santa Cruz was heading out to one of the biggest trade shows of the year to show off their new board line. They finished up and put the final touches on their new series, which they dubbed the Terrorist Series. All the boards show different terrorist acts, like people throwing Molotov cocktails or riot police. They finished up the boards and they were sitting in the warehouse. That date, September 10th, 2001. They woke up the next morning and obviously everything had changed. They decided they weren't gonna release the series. Another thing that Santa Cruz has become famous for over the years is their insane collabs. They've done limited edition products with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, SpongeBob, The Simpsons, Marvel, Vans, America, Garbage Pail Kids, Puma, and even Star Wars. A lot of these have become collectibles now and they're worth a lot of money on eBay. The Star Wars boards came in an action figure packaging box. They also had another Star Wars series that were layered and laser cut all in these different crazy ways and they retailed at $500. So their resell, insane. They also recently did an art show called The Screaming Hand Art Show, where they did a bunch of different artists' takes on the Screaming Hand logo. They had people like Nottis, John Lucero, Steve Caballero, Steve Olson, Ben Horton, Mouse, Sean Cliver, Andy Jenkins, Mark Gonzalez, and many more. Over the years, Santa Cruz has also made some of the most iconic skateboard videos. Videos like Streets on Fire, Speed Freaks, Wheels of Fire, Out There, A Reason for Living, A Right to Exist, and many more. They've also continued on the tradition of R&D, most recently releasing Power Ply and their carbon fiber VX boards. They also do more than skateboards. They make surfboards, snowboards, and they have an offshoot bike company. And they have kept up the tradition of having one of the best teams in skateboarding. They have legends on the team like Eric Dressen, Steve Alba, Tom Knox, and they're mixed with some of today's best skaters. People like Eric Winkowski, Jake Wooten, Fabiana Delfino, Jeremy Nibs, Kevin Braun, Tom Asta, Blake Johnson, Justin Summer, Mario McCoy, and many more. Happy birthday and congrats on 50 years of Santa Cruz. What's your favorite team rider and what's your favorite board that they've done over the years? Let us know below. Guys, I'm Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and we just watched 14 things you didn't know about Santa Cruz skateboards. If you consider yourself a smart person, don't be dumb. Stay out of the malls, support your local skate shop. They're the ones bringing the culture and making skateboarding happen. Stay tuned for comment of the week. Oh, we got a spicy one for you, my guys. It's from a guy named Texas Man 3215 He said, Creeper trucks, I really want them back so much that I'm contemplating on getting a brand new pair for $300 and skating them. There's nothing you can spend your money on that's better. It's a great investment. 